All right, with a technique like XRF, we can get the elements and therefore the composition of uh, a specimen. But we generally want to also know amounts, right? How much? So quantitative analysis, not just qualitative. So just like we did with XRD when we talked about mixtures, the composition in an XRF sample is going to be related so composition is related to peak intensity just like it was in xrd but obvi obviously there's more than that that goes on uh, with this so our composition uh, c is equal to three factors So C equals M times K times uh, I sub R. So let me just go through those for you. So C is the, the weight fraction. M is what we call the specimen matrix factor. And K is the instrument factor, and then I sub R, this is the peak intensity. So obviously the, the weight fraction of a material is related to the peak intensity, but we also have these two factors, one for the specimen and one that uh, incorporates the uh, instrument. So the instrument factor K, so this um, includes factors like the conditions, the condition of the primary source. So the primary source of uh, x-rays, the geometrical arrangement of the specimen. Uh, that's with relation to the radiation and detector and the characteristics of the detector. So basically all the factors that would go into um, the, the instrument. So we group all those together into one factor. The matrix factor, M, this uh, refers to the interactions among elements in a specimen, in the specimen. So this is what we mean by the matrix effects. So we're going to get into this in a little bit uh, more detail, but before we do that, I have a quiz question for you, which is what are some of ways, what are some of the ways that elements in the matrix could interact to either decrease or increase the intensity of characteristic x-rays produced by XRF. So basically brainstorm and see if you can come up with some of the ways that an element can interact, elements in the matrix could increase or decrease the intensity of characteristic x-rays that are produced in XRF. So do that, uh, pause this video and come back and we'll discuss. All right, so now that you've had a chance to brainstorm some ways in which elements in the matrix could in increase, decrease, um, interacting uh, to increase or decrease the intensity of characteristic x-rays. Let's go through the three the three main matrix of x, and I'll kind of talk through uh, some of the options that you may have had. So the first one is what we call primary absorption. So this is radiation 
that is absorbed on the beam's path, so the primary beam. to reach the atoms to be excited. So basically, in a specimen, if you're trying to, to excite a certain atom in that material, other atoms may get in the, its way and absorb that radiation, right? So that would be primary absorption. So it, it's absorbed before it can reach the target. So that's the first. And that's obviously very common, right? That's something that we can expect to happen. The next one is what we call secondary absorption. So this is absorption of fluorescent. And again, we use the term fluorescent to indicate not the primary, but it's the produced. It's what causes that effect. Uh, so it's the fluorescent radiation. So the characteristic x-rays themselves, um, it's absorption of those fluorescent radiation from atoms that occur along the path inside the material. And so that's from the specimen to the detector. So basically, so basically, the primary radiation has made it to the target, the target atom, and that target atom produces a fluorescent or characteristic X-ray. And that characteristic X-ray is on its way to the detector, but it encounters other atoms in the specimen, and those absorb that radiation. So it doesn't make its way to the detector. So that's obviously uh, an issue. All right, so that's the second one. So the third one, the last one that we're going to talk about, this is what we call secondary fluorescence. So this is when the fluorescent radiation of a target atom so an atom's been excited and it produces this fluorescent or characteristic x-ray um, so um, by the fluorescent Okay, so um, in this case, um, I think the wording on this one's a little confusing, but effectively the fluorescent radiation, the characteristic x-ray that is produced on its path to the detector can actually interact um, with another atom and cause more fluorescence. And this is... Um, um, This has to be of atoms with a higher atomic number. Specimen. So basically, we create fluorescent radiation from the fluorescent radiation that occurs, right? So it's kind of a chain reaction that's occurring uh, in these cases. So if we think about this, what these three effects have, so this is reducing the radiation that goes to uh, an atom. So this would uh, decrease the intensity um, at the detector, ultimately. Same with this one, these, um, fluorescent radiation is getting um, absorbed, and so this would decrease. So both of these decrease the intensity, whereas this one uh, would decrease 
the radiation of one atom while increasing that of the other. So this one actually ha can have a positive uh, effect um, in that it increases um, for certain uh, atoms. So this can uh, affect it, um, give us a higher than expected amount. Um, so that so that's the issue, and that's what we need to to, to look at in a little bit more. So in this uh, next section, we're going to talk about the different methods in which we actually quantify uh, XRF signal. All right. So this first method to quantify the composition of XRF is known as the internal standard method. So this involves. adding a standard. And so this is a standard element of a known concentration into the specimen. So we add something of a known concentration, known element, standard, into the specimen. So we obtain the weight fraction of an element, and we call that Cx, from its measured x-ray intensity and we call that the intensity, uh, and then sub x, with knowledge of the weight fraction of the standard. And we call that Cs. And so that's intensity is going to be I S. So basically we have a unknown weight fraction of an element and it's measured uh, intensity. And then we have the um, weight fraction because it's a standard and it's corresponding intensity that we measure. And so we can get the ratio of concentrate weight fractions equal to the ratio of intensities. So in this, if you are thinking back to the original equation for uh, concentration, you'll know that we're missing a couple terms here. So there are some assumptions that we've made. So these assumptions are that the instrument factor is the same for both. Elements. And uh, if we think about this as an assumption, this is a good assumption. Because if we think about what we've changed here, we've added a specimen, or so we've added a standard, but we haven't done anything to the instrument itself, right? So if you go back to the, the list of, of things that go into that instrument factor, um, this should be fine. So this is a relatively good uh, assumption. The other assumption that, that we make here is that the matrix factor is the same for both. And this may not be correct. So this is the one we have to watch out for. Because we have interactions within specimens, can be different. For different elements. So this is the one 
that we have to be a little cautious on because the while the instrument stays the same the specimen we're changing uh, to add the standard and so this may not be uh, as great of an assumption so we have ways of, of sort of mitigating this though and so to reduce matrix factor differences we can do a number of things first um, we can have similar um, atomic numbers so basically the standard and the, the specimen um, have similar atomic numbers we can um, have the weight fractions so the concentration uh, be similar so the standard that we have is close to the the um, the uh, specimen so that will help we can also keep uh, standard um, element weight fractions so C to less than or equal to 10% so this basically doesn't significantly affect the rest of the spectrum and then the last thing we can do is make sure that there's thorough mixing so this seems like an easy thing to do but uh, you want to make sure that you have thought of everything so so we want to thoroughly mix all elements within the specimen so these things will reduce the um, the complications with the matrix factor and make this equation more and more valid so we can do that so this is the internal standard method um, this is not necessarily the most common way that these are done and so a more common way to calculate these amounts is actually the fundamental parameter method so this is the second one we're going to talk about so this is the most widely used And the reason we do that is because it requires powerful computers. So this is easy for us because even the most routine computers these days is powerful in terms of the uh, what the textbook thinks, you know, having been written several years ago. So we have no problem achieving uh, powerful computers. So it can do very uh, iterative calculations because that's what it is it's an iterative calculation of theoretical parameters such as the intensity So basically it does an iterative calculation which means it does it over and over again and it starts with a theoretical intensity uh, of the uh, analyzed composition and basically it tries to converge it to uh, the, between the theoretical and what's a, uh, what is actually um, expected So it continues those calculations until the convergence of the intensities. So between expected 
and theoretical. So this is why it needs those powerful computers. Um, but this method is effective. It's accurate. And obviously computationally intensive. But again, not an issue for modern computers. So, uh, because you know this is because this uh, you know uses algorithm algorithms that uh, do this iterative calculation between these different intensities. Um, there's not much you know I can kind of show you here to to give you more information. Just that uh, the fundamental parameter is basically if you use XRF and you're using the software that goes along with it to to get quantitative analysis, you're probably using this method.